Coming up at News 3 at 10, an amazing story of a 911 dispatcher and a life saved. And some of Madison's best musicians are being celebrated. Coming up later, we'll take you to the Mama Awards. This is News 3 at 10. Good evening and thanks for watching News 3 at 10 tonight. I'm Madeline O'Neill. We'll get to those stories in a moment, but first we wanted to share some news just coming into our newsroom tonight. Columbia County Dispatch tells us there is an active scene right now at Silver Lake Beach in Portage after a report of a missing child and that Columbia and Sauk County dive teams are currently on site. Apparently the child's inner tube was found without the child and the drive is closed near the beach there and police are asking you to avoid the area. We're still working to get the latest information and we will have more tomorrow on News 3 this morning as well as on our website channel3000.com. In Rock County tonight, when you call 911, usually you're trying to get a hold of police or fire to respond to an emergency. We don't often stop to think about the person who answers the call and how their vital role is. Our Rock County reporter, Jenna Middow, introduces us to a dispatcher who helped save a Janesville man's life over the phone. It's a hard career field, but there are those calls that will forever be a part of our lives. After a decade of working as a Rock County dispatcher, Bullet Dispatch Amanda speaking. Amanda Johnson has a lot of stories to share. Some calls stick with you, some voices stick with you. But most of the time, she doesn't get to see how the story ends. And that's what's so hard as a dispatcher is we never get to close the book. Going from one call to the next, it's a fast paced job. 10 4. Which is why the call she got on November 8th, Rock County Communications has stuck with her. That night I was training a trainee and we were training on call take and the 911 line rang and so I answered it and it was Jen and saying, you know, my husband's not breathing. Jumping into action, Amanda told Jen Carhart to start CPR. I was struggling. I was afraid. I was panicking. I put myself in shock. I am not CPR certified at all. But with Amanda's calming voice on the other end of the line, together the two women tried to keep Brian Carhart alive until paramedics could get there. She was my guardian angel that night to help me save my husband's life. Let's face it, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for these two girls. I mean, I'd have been gone. Brian is officially my first save after 10 years. I was blessed with being able to, to save him. And instead of the story ending like it normally does when Amanda hung up the phone, this time she was able to meet the man she saved. She's, she's an angel. She's my hero. Out of all the calls she answers, this was definitely a once in a lifetime opportunity. Amanda will remember this one for its happy ending. And to see that he's doing so amazingly well. In Janesville, Jenna Middaw, WISC News 3. Wow, what a story. Brian is doing much better now than he was a few months ago. He says he's looking forward to going boating with his son this summer and making the most of every day. Now let's turn it over to Karin Swanson with your first alert forecast. Hi, Karin. Hi there. We had some heat and humidity across the area this weekend, and it looks like we're going to have one more day of those high temperatures as well as dew points. And with that, we have alert days on tap for tonight and into tomorrow as well. Our low tonight only drops to 75 degrees with heat index values in many spots staying close to 80 degrees. Tomorrow, our heat index values will be up close to 90 with some strong thunderstorms, especially for the afternoon and the evening hours. Tonight, we do have some strong thunderstorms into northern Wisconsin. That's where there is that severe thunderstorm watch in effect. We also had one stronger storm move through Vernon County earlier. Now that's heading off to the east, heading toward Wisconsin Dells, but it has lost some of its strength. So not no longer a severe thunderstorm, but still a chance of seeing some of those storms as we head through the night tonight and then some additional showers and thunderstorms into tomorrow. Temperatures right now are in the 80s. It's 84 degrees here in Madison, but it does feel warmer than that. Heat index values make it feel more like 90 in Madison, 93 up toward Camp Douglas, 
92 in Boscobel as well as in Lone Rock. So some very sticky conditions still outside at this hour. Temperatures by early tomorrow drop down to the middle 70s with highs tomorrow in the middle to the upper 80s. We'll see the, a chance of showers and thunderstorms in the morning. Then more numerous showers and thunderstorms develop for the afternoon. Some of those could produce heavy downpours of rain and a few could be strong. We'll talk more about that outlook coming up in a few minutes. All right, thanks, Karin. New tonight at 10, outrage is growing as thousands of children are being taken from their parents at the U.S.-Mexican border. Protesters marched in Texas today demanding authorities stop separating migrant children from their parents. The protest was organized by Texas Democratic Congressman Vito O'Rourke. Department of Homeland Security numbers show that over a six-week period, nearly 2,000 children were taken from nearly as many adults. President Trump has blamed Democrats, the minority party, for their predicament, while urging them to work with Republicans on immigration reform. White House advisor Kellyanne Conway denied that the children are being used to gain leverage. The president is ready to get meaningful immigration reform across the board. And Chuck, let me just tell you that nobody likes seeing babies ripped from their mother's arms, uh, from their mother's wombs. Until recently, migrant families were usually released together while waiting for a judge to rule on their case. But in April, Attorney General Jeff Sessions unveiled a zero tolerance policy. Anyone caught crossing the border is now subject to prosecution. That's where the separation happens because children can't be kept in adult jails. Wisconsin Representative Mark Pocan was in Brownsville, Texas today protesting the move. He says the Trump administration's decision is immoral. We just really need to um, do everything we can to make the president realize that his decision is a perverse one uh, and it's un-American. On Tuesday, President Trump will meet with House Republicans to discuss their immigration strategy. City of Madison engineers say one of the city's biggest construction projects is still on track. The Monroe Street construction project is slated to finish in mid-November. Store owners along Monroe say they're happy about the progress and look forward to its completion. Monroe Street is going to be much improved, not just what you'll be able to see in terms of new surface on the street and new pedestrian safe crossings, but also the infrastructure underneath is all being revised. Monroe Street businesses are now participating in a game of bingo, where you can check out different bingo items at different Monroe Street stores. Developing news tonight in Madison, two sisters are in the Dane County Jail after allegedly stabbing each other during a fight in front of five small children. Police say around noon yesterday they found two sisters, a 23-year-old and a 24-year-old, with stab wounds at a home on Wakefield Street near Midvale Boulevard. Officers say both women are facing charges of recklessly endangering safety, while a 30-year-old man is facing charges of starting the fight. Child Protective Services is finding a place for the children to stay. Well, with the heat this weekend, staying cool is at the top of our minds. Consumer Reports just rated window air conditioners and reveals some top models that won't break your budget when the summer heat rises. If you don't have central air, or even if you do and just need some extra cooling in a room in your house, Consumer Reports says the right window air conditioner can get the job done. When we're testing air conditioners, we want to know how well they're going to cool your space. Consumer Reports groups air conditioners into three main sizes based on BTUs and the size of the room you need to cool, which you'll also find listed on most air conditioners. Small ACs are best for 100 to 300 square foot rooms, medium for 250 to 400 square foot rooms, and large ACs should cool 350 to 650 square foot rooms. None of that matters if the air conditioner doesn't perform well. That's why in Consumer Reports Special Lab, window air conditioners must lower the temperature inside this chamber to a set point of 75 degrees. Sounds easy, but testers challenge the air conditioners to cool a room that's 90 degrees with nearly 60% humidity. Another factor in CR scoring, an accurate thermostat. How accurate that thermostat is saves you money. If the air conditioner is thinking that it's still trying to hit 75 degrees even though it's actually at a room temperature of 71 degrees it's running longer than it needs to and wasting electricity the best air conditioners in consumer reports tests can cool a room in about 15 minutes or less keep the temperature consistent and the best part they don't necessarily cost more money either 
Consider this $200 Amana for a smaller 100 to 300 square foot room. For a medium sized room, Consumer Reports recommends this $250 GE available at Lowe's. And for rooms at least 350 to 650 square foot, this $350 LG is a winner. For WISC News 3, I'm Rose Schmidt. Consumer Reports says consider an air conditioner with a programmable setting timer or Wi-Fi enabled unit so you can come home to a cool house. And remember, whether you're buying a new air conditioner this year or maintaining an older one, be sure to clean the filter once a month. The cleaner the filter, the less work it has to do and the longer it will run, which will save you money. And coming up, it's a big weekend for Music in Madison. We'll hear from those at our own version of the Grammys tonight when we come back. Madison's version of the Grammys is happening here tonight. The Madison Area Music Association Awards celebrates local artists and recognizes their contributions to the community. Photojournalist Corey Ferris brings us to the awards, which are just wrapping up here tonight. The Mama Awards is kind of like Madison's version of the Grammys. We are here to honor all of our local celebrities. We're just honoring uh, young musicians, musicians who've been in it forever. Um, it's gonna be a big fun event. The music community is so talented in this city. We have to recognize that. We have to come out and support that. So it's always great to see a big crowd here. For those who've never been here before, they, they don't really know what they're getting into. And then they show up and they're like, whoa, this is way bigger than I expected. And for those who've been here before, we set the bar pretty high last year, and I think we're going to just push it a little bit higher again. So I'm really excited to, to showcase all the wonderful talent we have. There's anyone out there who has a 
dream in your heart and you feel like you might not be in the right season or stage of life to do it, I just want to encourage you to go after it. It's worth trudging through some mud. This event itself isn't a huge fundraiser, but it brings a ton of awareness to the cause, and I think that helps us raise money year-round. And um, to date, the Mama has donated over $100,000 back into the music community, so we're super proud of hitting that milestone this year. And I know that events like this help us to spread the word. You can find a full list of tonight's winners on themamas.org slash awards. And area businesses are spearheading an effort to keep the city's parks clean. Fial Raven and Fontana Sports have partnered up in the cleanup. News 3 was there as the group of volunteers met at James Madison Park this morning. They picked up trash and tidied things up for everyone visiting the park. The two businesses partnering together focus on the outdoors, so organizers say it's the least they can do for their community. Every second and fourth Sunday of the month, the group gets together from 9 to 10 a.m. to clean James Madison Park, but anyone can join them by just showing up. If you thought you were seeing a double today on the east side of Madison, no need to adjust your glasses. Around 50 sets of twins came marching in two by two over at the East Side Club on Monona Drive this afternoon for Twin Fest. With games, a photo booths, and even some twins trivia, the fun event gave twins a chance to celebrate their unique bond. And organizers say it's a good way to meet other twins. Being identical, growing up as a twin, knowing what it's like when people kind of look at you, well, which one are you? This one, it's like, let's just have a fest about twins because we kind of all understand each other. Money raised during the event goes to help the River Food Pantry. Well, Karen Swanson joins us now with a look at the forecast. What can we expect this week? It was hot this weekend yeah, for all those outdoor was. activities. Yeah, and we have one more day of that heat and humidity tomorrow. Perhaps not mm -hmm. quite as hot as what we experienced today, but still some heat and humidity tomorrow before we finally cool things down by about Tuesday. Tonight we do have a few showers and thunderstorms on the map, mainly to the west of Wisconsin Dells. There was one severe thunderstorm warning earlier over toward the northwestern part of Vernon County. Now those storms have diminished somewhat as they track into the uh, Juneau County area. Some additional showers and thunderstorms back into southern Minnesota and northern Iowa, but the main band is still into the northern part of the state. That's where the cold front is draped right now, and that's going to slowly make its way to the south as we head through the overnight and into the day tomorrow. So dealing with some uh, slow moving showers and thunderstorms and also kind of a prolonged chance of seeing some of those through tomorrow night and even into Tuesday. The best chances for stronger storms tonight will be across the northern part of the state that marginal risk getting just to the far northern part of our viewing area overnight and then tomorrow that marginal risk across southern Wisconsin so saying an isolated chance of seeing one of those strong or severe thunderstorms mainly for tomorrow afternoon and into tomorrow evening perhaps some wind gusts as well as some hail as those storms move through in addition to that heavy rain potential time lapse today shows some of the clouds this morning but getting into that sunshine this afternoon and with that sunshine we really turned up the heat this afternoon. 91 degrees here in Madison after a low of 75. Normals for today are 79 and 57. That record high today, we were about four degrees short of that or shy of that at 95. Temperature right now 85, four degrees here in Madison with winds out of the south at nine miles per hour. The air pressure is rising. We have temperatures in the upper 70s to the 80s. 85 over toward Lone Rock. Feeling warmer than that though. It feels like 90 in Madison. Feeling like 92 over toward Lone Rock. Our future track heat index values will be dropping off through the night down into the 70s and the 80s and then they really jump right back up there into tomorrow with some heat index values topping 90 degrees once again before those showers and thunderstorms move through tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures right now are in the 80s but much cooler back to the west and northwest. That's behind that cold front that's going to slowly sag to the south and right along that front is where we'll see those shower and thunderstorm chances as we head through tonight and into tomorrow and with it even just to our south on Tuesday we continue to see some of those shower and thunderstorm chances here across southern Wisconsin. So tonight we do have that chance with uh, temperatures dropping to 75 degrees and muggy conditions overnight. Tomorrow the best chances for showers and thunderstorms will be early in the day and then redeveloping in the afternoon. High of 86 with heat index values near 90. Here's that future track forecast through tonight. You can see that front and those storms sagging to the south overnight. By 6 a.m. tomorrow the better chances will be to the north of Madison. Those slide off to the east and fall apart and then another round
ground moves through as we head through tomorrow afternoon. We continue to see that wet weather through tomorrow night with some of those storms hanging on into Tuesday. Precipitation potential. This is through Tuesday. We could be looking at some areas seeing one to two plus inches of rain, especially if those storms track right on top of each other with that very slow movement of that front. We do have temperatures that will be much cooler by Tuesday back into the middle 70s with some of those showers and thunderstorms. We dry things out Wednesday into Thursday with highs in the upper 70s. Some shower and thunderstorm chances return Thursday night into Friday. A couple of chances for next weekend and then turning warmer once again next week. Okay, looking forward to some cooler temps. Yeah, it'll feel nice. Okay. Big change. Yes, thanks a lot. You're welcome. And still ahead, an update from Packers after many camp. That's next in sports. So you guys. Well, for some reason, the Brewers don't really do well playing in games on Father's Day. On this holiday, they're at 19 and 32. I feel like there's a who's your daddy joke in there somewhere. But while well, on Mother's Day, they have the best record in Major League Baseball. Yeah, I don't really get it either. Brewers down 2 nothing in the first. Eric Thames, first week back from injury, solo homer to right cutting the deficit in half his one of two home runs on the day in the third inning Lorenzo Kane at the plate he'll go deep to center field that's an RBI double scoring Christian Yelich we've got a tie ball game at two fast forward to the fifth inning now Brewers playing catch up they're down two but Travis Shaw goes right Kane scores and despite a late ninth inning rally Brewers lose at 10 to 9 the final score they're headed to Pittsburgh tomorrow 
Cubs looking for the sweep in the series finale against the Cardinals at Bush Stadium. Javi Baez left the game after getting hit in the elbow. No word yet on the results of an X-ray. Right now, the Cardinals lead 3-0, led by a Matt Carpenter home run in the seventh. Well, 16 Packer veteran players were excused from minicamp activities, but receiver Devontae Adams wasn't one of those guys. Fresh off of a new contract, the fifth-year pro bought himself a new house and then got right back to work. The receiver position full of young guys, five of them 23 years old or younger. So the 25-year-old Adams has to do what he can to show the kids how it's done. And after OTAs and minicamp, he says, so far, so good. So at this point, just trying to get guys ready and, and um, you know, shed as much light on um, and share my knowledge of what I, what I can uh, help them on. And everybody, um, ears wide open, and they've been, they've been real receptive and, and listening to things that I can, I can bring to the table. So it makes me feel good about trying to help them out. Some golf now. A bit of a better day overall for the pros at Shinnecock Hills today after the scores reflecting on how tough this course is. One guy having a much better day, Phil Mickelson. Did not have a good time on hole 13 yesterday. Ended up with a 10, but not today. The par putt, so six shots better than yesterday. Celebrating that, he ended the day at 15 over. But the winner, a guy we've seen before here in Wisconsin, Brooks Kepka with a 68 today to win back-to-back -to -back U.S. Open championships. He also won at Aaron Hills last year. He's the first golfer to win back-to-back -back U.S. Open since Curtis Strange in 1988 and 89. Edgerton native Steve Stricker shooting a 70 today, which put him at 11 over tied with the likes of Ricky Fowler and Charlie Hoffman. Finally tonight, we told you earlier that Mexico upset the World Cup defending champion Germany 1-0. Well, the entire country is basically celebrating. Thousands of fans filling the streets of Mexico City. And according to SIMSMA, the organization that tracks, tracks earthquakes in Mexico, tremors were detected in Mexico City and is being categorized as an artificial earthquake due to, get this, mass jumping. Got that mass jumping. More match play tomorrow, including Sweden against North South Korea, rather, Belgium versus Panama, and Tunisia versus England. We'll be right back.
Father's Day to all the dads out there. There's mine. Happy Father's Day. Then we've got, is that yours, Melissa? Melissa. Yes. Maybe he's probably sleeping. It's okay. That's <laughs> me with my dad, Aww. Al. Daddy the king of the sweethearts, That's we call so him. That's so cute. Aww. Oh, there's our producer, Matt's dad. That's a nice family picture. Oh, yes. who is that? Let me see. Who is this? Justin, right? Running our camp? No? No, oh, that's Justin. Justin. Oh, my God. And Justin's kid. Oh, my God. Sean, right? That's your son's name? Very cute. And Corey. Corey. Oh, Corey. He's our photographer. And looks like Bree. Oh, well, She's our dad. producer. Producers. And, and Sue. Sue. Where'd she go? Sue and her dad here as well. Oh, some cute ones. And, of course, Oh, Kevin. and Kevin Lewis. Oh, I love this picture. Our whole weekend sports. <laughs> oh, I love it. Whole weekend news team this evening. Yeah. Well, so after a hot day. Father's Day weekend, yes. what do we got coming? Yes, another day of heat and humidity tomorrow with some of those showers and thunderstorms as we head through tonight into early tomorrow. Another round develops then tomorrow afternoon and night. Some of those could become strong or severe, and some could produce heavy downpours of rain. Heat index values over the next 12 hours. Staying very warm, only dipping down into the 70s and 80s. We'll be very warm tomorrow. All right. Thanks for watching News 3 tonight. Download the new Channel 3000 app and get alerted on your mobile device the minute news breaks. Wherever you go, be the first to know with Channel 3000.